Hello, Rich Colvin here again. Today I'm going to be working on part two of the shaving brush stand. And that's this right here uh, for the shaving brush for the uh, what I made in part one. I'll show you that uh, shortly. So piece I'm going to make today is the wooden disc that's going to go into the center here. Uh, just briefly I'll tell you about the metal pieces. I start with uh, steel pipe. This is two and a half inches outside diameter and it's a quarter inch thick here so you end up with a two inch inside diameter. <clears throat> After you put it uh, on the metal lathe and clean it up a little bit it's you know you end up with these pieces like this that are um, slightly bigger than two inches. You don't want to take too much metal out of there but um, you know that's fine. And I aim for around half an inch tall but uh, you can see I made one here that's three quarters uh, if somebody has a really uh, high bathroom maybe with a small sink that may look good you know not not a big deal I can go either way on it as it regards the U here that holds the brush that is made from you know one of these quarter inch steel bars and I cut them four inches uh, then you just put it in your drill and you want to ease off these edges to get them a little rounded here so that it, it doesn't mar up the handle when you put it in there and you know then you can also while you have it in the drill run it against your wire wheel and get rid of all the rust on there once you got all that in place uh, and taken care of I take you know one inch steel bar which you can see it fits fine right in there and you're just gonna put this in the vise and use your ball peen hammer and bend it around there. You know, the key point is you want to end up with the two ends so that the, the curve is in the middle of that four inch piece, not uh, with one end sticking out a whole lot more than the other. I mean, they don't have to be exact, but you know, visually they need to look good, okay? And then the back piece is same steel rod, quarter inch, and it's six inches long. And you know, you're gonna to want to do the same thing where you ease off the edges and get rid of all of the, the rust. And then you're going to bend over half an inch here at the top. And the reason for that is you want the brush to hang you know, right over the center here. And if you, if you have it on the back, it doesn't. And plus then the, the bristles on the brush rub up against this. And they're going to leave soap over time. And it's just not going to look good. So, you know, that all seems a little easy. But I'll tell you, you know, welding that up and getting it right becomes a little tricky. So I developed this rocket science here. It's uh, three two inch by four inch two by fours. Well, one and three quarters by three and a half. But three of them just you know screwed here together. And then what I can do is I put it together, and this one the wood's uh, a little bit swollen. But what it allows me to do is I can put the U up here at the top, and then weld it onto here and this slot is where this piece will go and what that does is it keeps it so that this angle here and this angle are 90 degrees to each other that way you don't end up with it wonker jawed and that just wouldn't cut it the other thing that happens too is you want to make sure the bottom is at 90 degrees to this so again you know you and this this also sets the right height so i got a circle down here and that circle is used to uh, just basically make sure I hold that in place so that when I put this on here and it, again it doesn't have to be anything special and you I can tell you as somebody who's better at grinding than at welding even if it projects past it a little bit that's fine because you're just going to grind it off and and this is the bottom so most people aren't going to see it and if they do and they don't like it well maybe they need to go find somebody else to make one of these for them but <clears throat> you know you want to uh, to get this so that this angle here and this angle are 90 degrees to each other. So that's where this block comes in handy. Uh, again, these are uh, special built 2x4s. You can only get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, I don't know if, if Menards carries them. They might, but definitely you can get those 2x4s there. So that's how I make the metal piece um, for the stand. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to weld it all. That's there, there are videos on YouTube far better than me at welding, and I've seen them. Um, you can look for the the 
tag of welding porn. It's uh, There's some guys out there and some ladies that are really, really good. I, I'm not one of them. So, so what am I going to do here? Well, I, I've taken this piece of ironwood that matches. It's from the same chunk as the ironwood that I have for the brush. And, uh, you know, I got it all round. I did that off camera, too, because that's, that's not rocket science. And I went ahead and used my parting tool to, to establish where the bottom is going to be later. So what that pencil line there is, is where the top of this is going to be relative to that bottom. Because you don't want to have it, you know, concave into this, into the area down here, at least along the edges. You need it to be up a little bit proud. And indeed, it's, it's kind of nice if you have something like a 45 degree angle coming up here. Well, to do that, <clears throat> I'm not going to do a 45 this time. I'm actually going to put uh, some kind of a beading. And I, I used to think it was called crenellations, but I just looked it up and it's not. So I'm going to do some kind of a beading all the way around so that it comes in like this. And it'll start at, you know, parallel to the flat part, flattish part. I didn't bother you know, making this flat because I know I'm going to cut it off. But uh, it'll come in and then it'll curve and, and I'll use something like a quarter inch diameter there. It doesn't need to be very big. And, and you don't want it to be too big because this is this 96 lobes are not going to match up exactly with what I want to put on the top which again is my Paul Fletcher 9. So, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now, what I am a little concerned about is how small this is going to be for these bumps here on the 96 so that's why I've got a big chunk of wood here because I'm going to test this out on the top part and see how it looks before I go down too far and start putting it into the main piece and if it's too uh, you know too much you know and I need to have bigger bumps well then I'll switch over here to the A48 um, and see where we go from there so that's the plan let me go put all this on the MDF Rose Engine lathe and let's get started. Okay, the prototype is made here and what you'll see is I did use the 96 lobe rosette here, the sign 96 or A96, whichever you want to call it. And I looked that up while I was having some lunch and that's called reading uh, on the side of a coin, so I'm going to call that here the same. And then on the inside it does look good with that PF9 and I did three cuts uh, one that cut all the way around here and then you see the first layer and then the second layer and I didn't do any uh, adjustment in terms of phasing because I don't think with the PF9 it looks good with the adjustments unless you're coming at it from the opposite side for some reason but I actually like how the you know the con Vex or concave, we'll call this convex, and then the convex again matches up, you know, with each other there. So I'm going to stay with that. And um, what I'm not going to do though is I, I just think this really needs to be flat. So I'm going to use the fading wedge and just make that flat all the way around to give us a nice crisp cut here. Because it, it it just looks odd that it's kind of lumpy looking on the sides. So we'll get a nice crisp edge there, and I think this height looks good, so when it's uh, on the when it's mounted in there, it's going to be like this. And by the way, you'll notice that it's a little bit loose. That's intentional um, because I don't want it cracking, uh, you know, when it gets in there. And plus, when I put the lacquer on it, it's going to get a little bit tighter as well as the paint's going to tighten it up. So it, it's not going to be so so loose as you see here. But you got to leave room for those finishes. Um, that's a little bit much, but it, it'll be okay. So we're going to go with this, and if you'll stay with me, we'll start making this. And it's going to be down to here. All right, I've got the A96 rosette installed, and I've got it running around 85% amplitude. Uh, I wanted to not have it be just, you know, pointy so tops. And we're going to now cut it down to the line here. Okay, pencil line. 
this is going to be uh, muted when I do the video because it's it's just terribly loud. So it's uh, it's not something you want to listen to. But it'll be uh, you'll see the whole thing, it'll, and I'll speed it up. Okay, the reading's done, and it comes to exactly where I want it to <clears throat> in terms of the vertical alignment where it's going to come out of the stand. So now I just need to put the flat part in and then cut the PF9 in. So to do the flat part, we're going to use our fading wedge because it works so easily. And then when I start doing the cuts, I've actually got this now running a little over 100%, about 105% in terms of the amplitude adjuster. So that'll give a much cleaner and nicer uh, display of the design.
Okay, I ran that last pass super slow so that I can end up with something that's just smooth as glass, and it, it is amazing. So there's no sanding needed here. So let's go put our design now in the end. That ought to be about right. It's not going to be very deep, so let's see what we get.
Okay, I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of lacquer thinner so you can see what the design looks like. I'm using this because I'll use lacquer to finish it, but it'll, uh, it'll show it very nicely. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice look. So, there it is. Now I just need to finish it and then lacquer it and I'll put it into the stand once I get it finished, painted and there such. And it'll look like that. So here's the finished set. I think it came out really nicely. It's really amazing how those are both the same piece of ironwood. Um, you wouldn't think so, but they really are. So, that's what it looks like.